Hello everybody, in this video we will be discussing the limitations of dimensional analysis. So it is pretty obvious that you should know what is dimensional analysis before jumping to the limitations. So if you want to you can check the previous lecture or you can refer your books for knowing dimensional analysis. So today's topic is limitations of dimensional analysis. So the first and foremost one is that dimensionless constant cannot be obtained or cannot be derived. So remember in the previous class we had this k, uh, the dimensionless constant when we were deriving some formula through dimensional analysis so we were deriving formula through dimensions recollect quickly uh, like we had derived this one t is equal to k under root l by g we had also derived some like uh, what we had derived centripetal force k is equal to mv square by r so this k is here a dimensionless constant so it does not have dimensions okay so this k cannot be de uh, derived through dimensional analysis so i told you in the previous class that this k was 2 pi over here and how did we uh, say that it's through experiment and not through dimensional analysis we cannot say what the value of this k will be in in the formula that we derive through dimensional analysis so it becomes a limitation of dimensional analysis right so dimensionless constant so value cannot be derived through dimensional analysis so it is one of the limitations this k it's it's found out through experiments okay second uh, thing we can think of dimensionless constant okay why not dimensionless terms okay so dimensionless terms also cannot be derived dimensionless terms what are those quickly recollect cannot be derived so if you have a equation which has dimensionless terms like trigonometry sine cos n or your log function or exponential function so if you have for example let's say y is equal to a sine omega t so through dimensional analysis you won't be able to obtain this right because this is dimensionless and it has no dimension so if you even if you go through dimensional analysis you will reach the result here y equals a and this is lost since it does not have any dimensions okay if uh, if i have to give you more example of this q is equal to q naught e raised to minus t by tau or let's say k for now okay so you if you try through dimensions you will reach here q is equal to q naught because you'll say both are charged okay they will be equal okay so because this is a dimension less term and through dimensional analysis you cannot conclude that it will be there or won't be there so that also becomes a limitation hmm? What can we think more of now? Uh, if you can remember the formulas that we had derived, you can you could have seen the pattern. Only product type equations can be derived. Product type I'll say equations can be derived can be derived so for example if you have v is equal to u plus a t and you try to derive this v is equal to u plus a t through dimensional analysis you will you will get stuck in between or either you'll have two answers one will suggest that v is equal to u and other will suggest that v is equal to a t you can try it it will be fun if you do 
so either in either case you'll consider like i want you to take it this way u raised to a a raised to b t raised to c okay so uh, in one case you'll get it this way and in other case you'll get it this way you'll never obtain this sort of formula through dimensional analysis so only product type what do i mean by that so all the terms in that equation should should be a product like let's remember those which we had derived let's not write the constant we'll write it as k only l by g so all our products right on the right hand side all of them are products if you had to see the pattern then amazing all our products no plus minus sign in between so yes so if you have only product types equation can be derived if you have equations of this type or v is equal to u square or u square plus 2as can't be derived either you'll get uh, like for this either you'll get this or this okay if you try you can try let's go to the fourth limitation hmm so you if you remember we had to solve equations we had some equations we were solving those and finding the values of a b c okay so for those other condition is uh, we need as many equations as variables so if you have three variables you need three equations if you have four variables four equations and so on as many equations you have that oh sorry as many variables you have that many equations uh, you should have so in order to solve right otherwise you won't be able to uh, solve and you'll again get stuck so uh, uh, the number of variables should be equal to the number of equations so you have three three variables in most of the cases as we had a b c so accordingly we had three equations we had three simple okay you can even have four equations four variables so as many equations as variables if variables are more you will get stuck hmm. so these are the limitations i quickly want you to note it down i'll just have a word with you and we are ending with the lecture so it's such a short lecture i was waiting for this so the point that i wish to speak on is a dimensionally correct equation may not be correct sir what do you mean by this so a dimensionally correct equation may not be correct okay let's let's take an example for it sounds really confusing not so much so s is equal to ut plus half at square in the previous class we had already discussed that this equation is dimensionally correct but what i want you to do is to manipulate this constant or you add in constants or dimensionless terms okay so let's do that you sleep for the day see a dream and you say s is equal to ut next time you wake up you say you create a formula of yourself next day you sleep again and then you say it's pi at square okay again you sleep again you wake up you say u t plus now this is amazing dream you say sin theta hmm again you have a dream you say u t plus sin, uh, okay a t square into e to the power k k is some constant okay so if you check the dimension or uh, if you check uh, all these equations uh, dimensionally guess what they are correct they are correct dimensionally even because if you see here we have just manipulated the constant and in dimensional analysis anyways we are going to say 2 is a constant it won't have dimension we'll remove it okay so we'll remove this pi is a constant we'll remove this this is a dimensionless term so it's also getting kicked out this will be also kicked out so all of these even this one uh, are dimensionally correct but deep inside we know that only this one the one which i'm putting in box now is correct 
is actually correct it's correct in the language of physics because this was derived okay these are not derived this you i told you to sleep and wake up and think of a new formula right so these are not derived you don't have any proof for this and um except diamond it that it's dimensionally correct so that is not a good proof if you you have to derive it in some other way and dimensional analysis is just for checking equations and not deriving them remember that okay so a dimensionally correct equation may not be correct this is only the correct version and these are our dreams and they are wrong actually wrong dimensionally correct but so sir is it possible that a dimensionally wrong equation may be correct what do you think so i am just making this statement counter positive maybe so or dimensionally so i'm saying what if a equation is dimensionally incorrect so are there any chances that it will be correct think over it the answer is no no so if a equation is dimensionally dimensionally incorrect then there are no chances that that equation will be correct okay so let let us put that down in one point we'll combine that with this point so i hope you got this idea all of this fairies and dreams and all all the things okay so the first sentence a dimensionally correct equation may not be correct right you can also think of one crazy example which is you say you wake up and say work is equal to tor yeah and you say it's correct dimensionally right if you check it's correct dimensionally but if you go to see this is a vector and this is a scalar and how the how can you equate such a big blunder in physics so how can you equate a vector and a scalar okay actually this is dimensionally correct so this is also a very good example of saying that all dimensionally correct equations may not be correct hmm uh, uh and the uh, that's it last statement but a dimensionally incorrect equation will be always wrong or incorrect okay so if you have a equation i have given you an equation you check it dimensionally if it is correct or not and you find that it is dimensionally incorrect so that equation will never be correct okay so this is a plus point and this is a limitation you can say that okay this is a plus point that a dimensionally uh, incorrect equation will never be correct okay so you can picture this like dimensional analysis is like test one okay equation equation coming to dimensional analysis i am dimensional analysis equation is coming to me and it says i have that equation i check it i say okay this is dimensionally correct i place it on this side and it has other test to pass like so i have passed it okay i said it is dimensionally correct so it has other test uh, which will say it is a equation or a or not a equation so there are other tests following it but if i reject one of the equation like you are not dimensionally correct so it has to return from there itself it cannot be equation at least the one which i placed on the other side can think of being an equation but not the other one i hope you got that faltu analogy anyways let's end the lecture or uh, today's lecture i hope i think we are done with units and dimensions so yes we are done uh, a small part of error in analysis is remaining but i'll create a different playlist for that since i want to change my t-shirt so no good reason than that so okay so if you made it this far please drop a like and subscribe to my channel and as usual keep enjoying physics